Hi, y'all, and welcome to a new episode of Get Real with Casey Kasem. It's the podcast that takes a look behind the scenes of the fantasy football industry through interviews with some of your favorites in the business. On this week's episode, I sat down with Dustin Ledke of Dynasty Pros FF, The QB List, Dynasty Nerds, and Front Office Pros to talk about his Buffalo Bills fandom, the family league that's still going strong, rebuilding in Dynasty Leagues, guesting on what seems like every podcast, a Patrick Mahomes rookie card, plus a ton more. Make sure to give Dustin a follow over on Twitter at ddunit. 13. Give me a follow if you don't mind at the Casey Kasem and the podcast at get real underscore pod. This podcast is a proud member of the DAP network. Also, if you haven't heard, I have officially signed on to put out content with South Harmon FF. So watch out for that. And the get real with Casey Kasem Patreon is coming back real soon. I need your help in finalizing all the cool perks that you're going to get when you sign up for the Patreon. So if you have any ideas of what you'd love to see offered, please send me a message on Twitter. And now, here's my conversation with Dustin Ledke on Get Real with Casey Kasem. This is the behind the scenes Patreon stuff that I (laughs) have out there. But anyway, Dustin, I am excited, happy, and glad that you could be here today on a Tuesday. Uh, Worked out perfectly for me. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. You know, it's uh, it's Tuesday, so getting over the Mondays at work. Uh, but you know, my kid has basketball, so it's been late p- late pickup. We had to get him dinner, getting homework done. So it's uh, it's good to just kind of sit and chill for a little bit. Just I literally just got home probably half an hour ago. So <laughs> isn't that fun? I know. That's why I'm like, okay, work and when. And yeah, how does the uh, scheduling podcast and stuff work with your schedule? Because I know with me, it's a lot of like different time zones, and people are just kind of hard to work with each other on that yeah we're both luckily in central time zone so it works out good luckily my wife is super supportive of me chasing this dream of doing content and possibly turning this into a full-time job somewhere down the road um so i I try to only really do one a week if i can get away with it um and then usually most people are east coast so they like to do them late night if it's live it's usually six seven o'clock but generally they're recorded and they're like eight nine o'clock at night my son goes to bed at 8.30, so it's not too bad. If I can do them at night, I love that. I mean, I've had a couple people. I did uh, Dr. Kevin's, uh, the Fantasy Unlimited one. He's on the West Coast, so it's like, mm-hmm. he's like, hey, can we do like 9 o'clock Eastern time? I'm like, why are you giving me Eastern time? I'm Central, you're West Coast. Like, yeah, that works <laughs> for me. Um, so I just kind of play it by ear, but I try to limit to one a week. You know, some weeks I do two, and then I'll just take a couple weeks off. What's nice about not having my own podcast is I don't feel the need to like, I have to do a show every yeah. Thursday or whatever it is. I can kind of pick and choose when I want to do spots. Um, you know, if I want to do a bunch, I could schedule a bunch. Like I could probably get on one every day if I really wanted to. Just the community has been great of just like, hey, if you want to come on, sure, we'd love to have you. Um, so I just try to balance that. So like, I probably won't do any. Uh, I got two next week and I probably won't do any until after the New Year's. So I kind of get to pick and choose when and where I want to do them, which is nice. So I can kind of... Uh, you know, if we got a lot going on the week, I just don't do any. If I'm tired or sick, I just don't do any. So it's been pretty good. I've done, I started doing guest spots October of 2022. And my goal was to do 26 in a year. I had done two at that point, And I was like, I want to do 26 in a year. Like that's one every other week. It shouldn't be that bad. And I think I did like almost 80 wow. over the course of a year. <laughs> yeah, it was just the, the community has been great. Like I just was cold calling people like, Hey, do you, do you, I like your podcast. Can I come on? And people are like, yeah, sure. Come on tomorrow. I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. And so like it just steamrolling and people are like, Hey, I'd love to have you on. And so just, you know, meeting people on different podcasts, getting on their podcast. So it's just been great. And I, you know, pretty much everyone I've reached out to has said, yes, we'd love to have you on um, like yourself. And so then it's just been really cool just to, you know, doing some, do some repeat shows, which has been fun, you know, front yard fantasy done those a couple of times um, with those guys, you know, just getting on with all different people and then get to meet everybody at the expo, which has been super nice. So it was really nice to have that interface on, on a podcast, but then meet them in real life at the expo. So it kind of made my first expo a little less uh, scary, which was nice. That set me up for all kinds of stuff that we will be talking about in this podcast. I, I know that people are wondering about all kinds of things that you have to talk about the expo podcasting and all the stuff in between, but let's start just kind of getting to know you as a person in sports, just liking sports and being a part of the sports world. When you were growing up, did you like sports or how was that with sports? Yeah. So I'm a huge Buffalo Bills fan. My mom's family is all from Buffalo. So it was just like from day one, you're a Bills fan. 
Uh, my aunt and uncle had season tickets, so we'd go up there and do training camps or go to games. Obviously, I'm 40, so I grew up when the Bills in the 90s were going to four Super Bowls in a row. That was like, I think, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth grade for me. So it was just like this formidable time. Maybe, I guess probably was before that. It might have been 5th, 6th, 7th. It was somewhere in that range. Like, end of elementary school, junior high. So obviously, like, the Bills are really good. You know, you're excited because you're a fan. You're kind of forming that. I worked at a baseball card shop uh, in junior high. Uh, two nights a week. I worked Monday nights and Thursday nights. I made $10. I worked four to eight. They paid me $10 and I got free McDonald's um, for dinner. And I literally would just spend the money on cards. So there's still probably, you know, tens of thousands of cards at my mom's house, you know, from the nineties that aren't worth anything, but I just loved collecting them. I got real big into sports. It was just kind of the thing, right? I played little league baseball. I'm not super athletic, so I didn't really love playing sports, but I loved watching them. I'm a big football and hockey guy. Um, I enjoy those kind of sports, the action of them. I enjoy watching golf, you know, just cause it's a, it's a skill set that I don't have. Um, so I've always been into sports. You know, my stepdad's really big into sports. Um, you know, obviously I grew upside outside of Philadelphia. So I'm a Bills fan in Philadelphia with all these Eagles fans. So you kind of get this mix of like Philly fanness of like this hardcore, passionate, delusional fan base that is super <laughs> just aggressive. And then you get these Bills fans who are like, uh curse stricken and it's like just it's hard but it's it's it just formed a, i think a really great fan base and so i just have always loved sports and now i'm trying to get my 10 year old son into sports he has chosen to like soccer <sighs> unfortunately because i find that to be highly boring yeah and, uh, he loves watching Sorry. he will watch some football with me and he will cheer um we were actually out the other day at his basketball game and in between games he saw a guy in a dolphin's jersey and he goes oh the dolphins because bills hates dolphins so <laughs> it's like yes you've got at least got that into you i told him you could root for any team you wanted to but the dolphins so uh yeah i've just been a bills fan and a football fan pretty much my whole life well as a cowboys fan i can say who's 39 i can say i am sorry for yes. what happened but we've also had to live with <laughs> Well, and the last say, time you won a Super Bowl, you were. In... <laughs> I'll say this: I think if the if the first Super Bowl the Bills were in, that kick goes in and doesn't go wide right, mm -hmm. I, we win that one. I think we can win the next one. I still think we lose two to the Cowboys. I don't know if we make it to the fourth one because I think the fourth one was like we're gonna make it just despite everyone who didn't want us to make it. But I think they go to three. If you maybe they go to four and win two out of four, it just drastically changes everything about the franchise at that point. Yeah, and then what do the Cowboys fans, myself included, what do we have to complain and talk about for yeah. the next <laughs> however many? Yep. Yeah, we've got that many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When is that? Now, what have you done for me lately? So, okay, Philadelphia, too. I kind of have a connection there. Not really, but my dad's from Pennsylvania. So, like, I get the okay. Eagles. My family's big Eagles fans, all that jazz. My dad's not, but my, my family is. And yeah, <laughs> Philly's just a different sports town in general. So it is. if it's you exactly. don't know, like all the stadiums are literally like next to each other in basically like downtown, whereas most of your stadiums, like the Bill Stadium is not in Buffalo. It's in Orchard Park. It's yeah. a good 30 minutes from Buffalo. But like Philly, they're all downtown. They're right next to each other. So sometimes you get like a you'll have a Saturday where it's a baseball game, a hockey game in the morning, a basketball game at night. And it's just the parking lots are just constant tailgating. It just creates a huge atmosphere. And obviously you just when the games get out, they just kind of like flood out of the stadiums to all over the city and they're just cheering and they're just ruckus and they're a great fan base. They can be a little over exuberant at time, but it's definitely a fun sports town to go to. Right. For sure. For sure. And uh you brought up card shop that you worked at as well. Are you still into cards or is that something that you were just into when you were younger? I like them. I don't currently buy or collect them because my wife would be furious. <laughs> <laughs> I got into a couple years ago and my wife was like, listen, you have too many hobbies. Like you can't just keep bringing stuff into the house. You can't keep spending money on it. So I was like, all right, I'll slow my roll. Um, there's a <laughs> few that I like. There's a couple cards. Where I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. I'd love to have that. Or I'd love to have this guy's rookie card or whatever. Like there's a couple Josh Allen rookie cards I'd like to get, but they're, you know, couple hundred bucks or a thousand bucks i'm like i can't really justify it but maybe someday um i grew up in the 90s so working a card shop in the 90s there was no autograph cards there was no it was just special inserts and that was really it and i remember we used to do pack wars where you open the pack remember the best card win and you know just seeing guys come in who would collect you know joe montana or they would collect emmett smith and they go i'm looking for this card and you have to go through like i'm looking for number 99 of the set because i got to complete my set and you just <laughs> dig through cards i remember when magic the gathering came out um all that kind of stuff. So I, I wish I could collect sports cards. I just have too many hobbies and it's not enough money or space in the house to do those sort of things. Oh, yeah, I get that. I've got a ton of stuff in my room. I was kind of like 
my room, my office. I don't have a separate room, but you know, it basically is where all of the crap goes to like hang out. So I have so much stuff from when I was selling stuff. I have so much stuff. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. But also with the card stuff, like I know that it kind of blew up over the last few years. I know that it's kind of cooled off a little bit, but I, I remember watching those videos of people ripping card packs and all of that. It it, ha- it did blow up a couple years ago. That's when I kind of got into it. And I was like, okay, like, let me see. So what happened is I went to, we had a local card shop that still sold packs because my son at the time was, I don't know, six. And he was like, I want football cards. So I was like, All right, I'll buy him this pack of like, you know, junk cards. And I was like, oh, let me buy this one pack. And I opened it and I end up pulling a, it's a sad story because I pulled a Patrick Mahomes autograph rookie card. But like his rookie year. So I was like, oh, I, yeah. I kind of know this guy. I wasn't super into the draft. I was like, all right, he's on the Chiefs. I knew kind of the name. He's like, well, he's not starting. Alex is a starter. So I looked online. It was selling for like 75 bucks online at the time. So I was like, all right, I'll put it on eBay for 150, right? Who knows if this guy's going to be any good? Literally one night I'm sitting on the phone and my phone just starts blowing up with offers. It was the day out. Al- it was like Alex Smith got cut and people were like instantly making me offers. So I was like, wow, all right, he's going to start. Maybe he'll be okay. The Chiefs weren't that great of a team at that point. Like they were just so-so. So I think I sold it for like 125. Wow. And I was like, <laughs> okay, like I don't know how good this guy's going to be. Yeah. Like didn't realize that it would just all of a sudden skyrocket to be like a $10,000 card. So. <sighs> But I used that and bought another box and, you know, got someone like got a, got a Christian McCaffrey rookie card and a couple other things and just sold those and bought some other stuff. So I wish I would have saved that card because obviously <laughs> I think it's like a $10,000 card now. But, you know, you live and learn. <laughs> you live and learn. You live and learn. And plus, you know, it's fun opening. I mean, granted, it was a Patrick Mahomes card at, at the beginning and not like something yeah. that you got at the end. But it's OK. It's OK. Right. And, and now it's now it's that's the that's the fun of it now. If you. This past year, if you're open cards and you would have got everybody was looking for a B. John Robinson, and if you got a Bryce Young, you were like, "Oh, great!" And now it's like, "Yeah, it's okay." Right? <laughs> <laughs> you got a, you know, an Anthony Richardson, you're happy, but there's, you know, different quarterbacks. Depends on the year. Last year, if you got pre-draft, you were like, "Desmond Ritter's going to be great." Man, you got Kenny Penny Pickett's going to be great. Man, like it just it's so hit or miss that I was just like, let me just capitalize on this 125 bucks that I spent 11 dollars on the pack. Right. I try to look at it that way. Like I yeah, look at it that way. way. Look at it that way. I, I turned 11 dollars into 125. So there you go. I mean, yeah, we've all got those stories. I left 250 dollars in a slot machine on my birthday Ooh. because I was hammered and didn't cash it out. <laughs> so oh whatever. You, you know, live I was and like, learn. whatever. I only I only spent 100. Sure. Yep. <laughs> um. So okay, what about fantasy football? How did you kind of stumble across that? We started a family league probably 25 years ago. It's still going. It's still very, very dry and basic. Like, we don't even have fractional scoring. That's how bad it is. Like, it's still on Yahoo. It's just the most boring league. But it's family. It's my aunts, my uncles, my brother, my sister, my mom, my dad. So we started playing. And, you know, I didn't know much. It was just like, I always read the back of the sports cards where it had stats. I was like, oh, this guy's got real consistent. So it was like, okay. And obviously, that was the years when, like, LaDainian Tomlinson was a god in fantasy football my brother always got him in the first pick so he won like two years in a row because he had latanian thomas for those two really good years but that's where i started developing like oh if i know a little bit more about backups if i know a little bit more about replacement players i can get an edge um so kind of played that and then realized like i really wanted to have that strategy like i wanted to be able to you know draft guys late and keep them so i got into a keeper league and that kind of had some wonky rules and it went through a couple iterations and it was like Maybe five years ago, someone's like, hey, do you want to do a dynasty? Like, I've been dying to do a dynasty. League. <laughs> like, that is right up my alley. Uh, we had a keeper league, and that you could trade draft picks. You could keep three people. And the best year, the fun, the most fun I've ever had in that league was I won the year before, and I had traded a second-round pick to get Le'Veon Bell won the championship. So I went into that draft knowing, like, I'm going to be really bad this year. Like, I mortgaged my future to win last year. Yeah. I was like, I'm just going to be bad, and I'm just going to tank, and I'm going to build for the following year. So I ended up drafting Ezekiel Elliott the year he was like, he got suspended. But when draft time, it wasn't, you weren't sure what was going to happen. Yeah. So I ended up drafting him in the end of the first round because I was had the last pick because I'd won. I ended up trading him for a future first round pick. Then he ended up getting suspended. And so I was actually going to the following year. I won, had a really bad year, was going to the following year. I had six picks in the first two rounds. And it got to the point that the league was so upset and felt like it was so unfair that they actually voted to restart the league Whoa. because they were like dustin's team's gonna be too good like he tanked he you know he's got all these picks we're never gonna be able to compete blah 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 so i count that as a championship even though we didn't play so we ended up restarting the whole league and then now i'm just in dynasty leagues which i love because i love the off season i love digging deep for players you know 
I read an article, a monthly article for QB list called Dynasty Future Report, where I find five just real obscure names. So like the first one I did was September of 2020, 21. I was saying like, pick up Josh Palmer now, like pick him up. Like Mike Williams is going to be a free agent. Like he's going to be, he's got Justin Herbert, like pick him up. And it, it was pick him up now. Next year, he'll be good. And he ended up being decent. Like he had a couple of really good, you know, good stretches there. So I love doing those kind of like diamond, deep diamond in the rough type stuff. So I write that article every month. But that's what I love about Dynasty is finding those obscure names and kind of researching. So when Deshaun Watson gets hurt, well, is Dorian Thompson Robinson any good? You know, who's who's stepping into that role? And you go, oh, it's this guy. I think he's good. Or maybe he's not. And kind of doing that. So that's what I love about playing Dynasty now. And obviously, I'm in the big tournaments. I'm in Scott Fishbowl. Well, not anymore. But I was in Scott Fishbowl until the playoffs. Yeah, I wasn't uh, even in it for the <laughs> baby bowl. You know, all that kind of stuff is just fun. You know, big tournaments like that, which I love as well. Yeah, those are so fun. And like the Scott Fishbowl, we'll talk about that some more too. I, I was out probably after the first week of being in the Scott Fishbowl this year. So we'll get into that. <laughs> but really, um, you know, when you first started playing fantasy football, what kind of information was out there for you? And how did you get your information? I was a magazine guy. Hold on. I got a magazine here. <laughs> He's pulling out some rabbits from my hat. Here we go. What we got? 2016. I still have it. Uh, okay. Fantasy football guide. I mean, I've had that. Um, I've got like I've got every year. I used to be the guy that would go to like Barnes and Nobles with a. I used to handwrite on a list and carry it in my wallet of all the magazines I had for that year, and I would just buy every magazine and just read them cover to cover multiple times on family road trips. I would just sit in the car and just read while my dad's driving. That's what it was. Like internet existed, but it wasn't what it was. It was just like you know AOL Messenger, and you know there were some sites, but it was like. You know, I look in that magazine, it's like, oh, like there's an MFL ad and it's probably the same website they had back then because it's never been updated. <laughs> but I never knew that was existed. I just remember reading articles and going, oh, OK, here's an article about, you know, that, you know, running backs, a top 12 running backs have a lesser chance of repeating than wide receivers. Right. So it's like, oh, that's a good nugget to have. And just I literally just read every magazine I could find. <laughs> yeah, I I feel you. They're nice to take with you on vacation or, you know, whatever. If you're trying to go to sleep and you need some, some reading. I mean, I used to go to, I had a friend who worked at a bookstore and she would tell me, she's like, yeah, we get magazines every, every week. And she's like this week, she's like, Hey, we got new, a couple new fantasy magazines. Do you have these ones? I'm like, Nope, need them. Gotta get them. I'll, I'll be there in a little bit to get them. And she'd or get them for me and bring them to me. Like I would just have a backpack on van vacations just with like 15 magazines in it. And I would just read them. So at that time, I'm guessing you didn't think that, Hey, in the future, I'm going to be, actually putting out content about fantasy football no i never i enjoy writing in general i never thought i would write about fantasy football was like oh this is cool information but it almost seemed too big brain for me like i can't and i'm not that like let me get this model and graph and graphs and i'm not that kind of guy right. um so i never thought i would do that kind of stuff in the future um it was just more of like this is cool information to have but knowing that information definitely helped me so like i remember when Richard Mendenhall got hurt. No, Willie Parker got hurt and was like, who's the backup? I was like, Richard Mendenhall. And I picked him up. Right. I actually had my stepdad pick him up because he needed running back. And like, just knowing that information off the top of my head just became super valuable. Cause it's, you know, my, in my household, it was me, my stepdad, my mom, my brother were all playing fantasy football. And then my uncles who would, you know, call, they'd be like, Hey, who, who do I pick? I'm like, do this. And I would, like, people were asking me advice because I just knew information. Um, in high school, my mom actually played in a fantasy golf league. Um, oh, wow. with some of the she was the secretary at my high school and much of the teachers would play so she actually was like hey can you help me so i used to actually graph i would go on and you had a lineup and you based on their salary and you had a salary cap and i would go all right tiger woods in this tournament for the past three years has finished second fifth tenth and he's been fifth sixth seventh the past three weeks so he's a good price and i would back out and win and i would she would give me portions of the winning so i do some of that kind of modeling and graphing but i never thought i would be creating content you know putting out videos writing articles i never thought that I never knew that was a thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It, it is interesting when you stumble across the fact that you can actually put content out, but you spoke about going from redraft to dynasty. So before we get into the content portion of, of your journey in the fantasy football space, when you joined a dynasty league and got into dynasty for the first time, what were you thinking? And then were you concerned with it being so different from redraft or did you go into it like what was your mindset going into it i mean so we i went from a keeper league to a dynasty which i think helped because i like had that motion of like there could be a multi-year strategy and you can kind of have that so i kind of went into it like 
hey, maybe I won't be great this year, but I could be okay and set myself up for the next year. So I went into it with like, hey, maybe I'll just stack the top of my draft and then just trade back and pick up picks next year. Um, kind of like instant rebuild almost. Like I end up drafting Patrick Mahomes third. It's a it's a weird league where we can start two quarterbacks plus a super flex. So you can start three quarterbacks. So there's just this huge high premium. There's a bunch of crazy trades that happened at one and two in the draft. So Mahomes fell to me at three. Um, which I really didn't want. I wanted to trade out of three, but the price was just based on the two other trades. Was he didn't too really high. want it because he got rid of that card and he had a sour taste. Well, so what happened <laughs> is my buddy had traded. He had one and we knew he was going to take Kyler Murray. And no, he didn't. He had six. We ended up trading up to one pretty early. So we knew he was going to take Kyler yeah. Murray. Then he ended up trading up to two to get Lamar Jackson. But he ended up giving up like his first and second and his fifth and like all sorts of like just crazy stuff. So when I went to trade out of three, people were like, well, I'm not going to trade you what two costs. I'm like, well, how about a little less? Like, no, that was a crazy trade. So it seemed unrealistic for me to trade it for so much less than what two went for. It just was like, well, I'll just take my homes and (laughs) I still have them on my team. And, you know, I'd love to trade them out, but the Mm -hmm. value is just not there yet. Um, So it was just more of this. There was a little bit of a learning curve of that, that startup draft of like how valuable is a 10th round pick in a startup draft. It's actually pretty valuable compared to, you know, a future pick. Um, so it was a little bit of a learning curve and you know, I was going into it with a couple new people, a couple of people that had played for a while, but I kind of went into it with a little bit of expert knowledge, but not, not enough that I felt like I needed. Yeah. I felt like I was having an issue with the draft. Yeah, exactly. Like figuring out how much things are worth and trading away draft picks and kind of getting a little excited because I had never played before. So I'm like, Hmm, this is, yeah, this is something I would do. And then not realizing that like, Hey, you might really want to like think about it. Cause you know, trading is a whole different beast as well. Yeah. And in redraft, you don't really trade a whole lot, but in, in dynasty kind of build your team, you're going to have to at some point. So do you trade a lot or how is your trading and do you, you know, are you able to get gems off the waivers or how does that go? I'm with generally you? pretty active on trades. Um, in my one league for QB list, we have a QB staff league and there's a guy who trade, I think he made 40 trades last season. So he was always coming to me and I was like, Hey, this is what I need to trade this guy. And he was like, all right, I'll get it. I'm like, okay. Like <laughs> it's basically like name your price. And so I'm pretty active. I definitely have my set of like, I think this guy is worth X. So, my buddy's been trying to trade me Rashad White all for like the past six weeks. And I'm like, he's worth a second. He's like, give me a second. I'm like, he's not worth a second. Like he's worth a second this year, but dynasty wise, he's probably worth a third. And I'll give you an early third. Cause I'm yeah. afraid that Rashad White's going to lose his job next year. And I was like, I- I'm not winning this year. Like I'm rebuilding right now. I was like, I don't need him for this year. I need him for next year. And I just don't know if he's going to have the value. So it's just been, he's like, I'll cook, you know, you're, you're trying to, sh- you know, you're a shark. You're just trying to play me. I'm like, listen, man, I'm, I'm up front with you. I will try to swindle everyone else, but I'll be up front with you. Like, I think he's really worth third. And I'll give you my third round pick, which is probably going to be the 301, yeah. which is really late second. Like, I'm not giving you the 201 for it because that's a late first. Like, that's just too much. We just mm-hmm. haven't been able to agree on a deal because um, I'm pretty set in like, this is what the guy is worth, unless it's someone I really, really want. Um, but generally, I can get decent guys off the waivers. Uh, I'm big in that league since it is like a three quarterback league. Like, I'm picking up Joe Flacco tonight because I have a ton of fab um because someone's gonna need them because you can start three so i'll i did this last year i picked up colt mccoy like two weeks before kyler murray got hurt kyler murray got hurt and i traded him for a third round pick like i'm i'll gladly scoop up a joe flack off the waivers and trade him to someone for a third round pick and just have more ammo for next year and use that to kind of package and move up or whatever it is so mm-hmm. i'm all about liquidity and assets so if i can turn someone into a pick and then turn that pick into and connect it with someone else to get up in the guy. So like I got Kyron Williams last year and everybody laughed at me. They're like, why do you want Kyron Williams? I was like, trust me, he'll be okay. And then obviously he's done well. I've seen people like, man, remember when we all laughed at Dustin? I'm like, yeah, I know. I, I, I know what's <laughs> happening here. People like I have Sam Howell, like I have Mahomes and Sam Howell. And people are like, we all thought Sam Howell was trash. I was like, I know you did. Like, yeah, I know. Okay. I, I, yeah, I w- I'm with you on the Sam Howell train. I was about that. I was like, all right, all right, let me get this it's going. But yeah, Dynasty is so fun because you get to rebuild sometimes yeah. and you get to kind of tinker around and figure out what's going to work and what you like and what you don't like. And and it's just that part is so much different than redraft. However you want to play Dynasty, you play. If you want to just try to win now and you want to mortgage the future, like go for it. Like, But mm-hmm. if you want to be more conservative, I'm definitely a conservative type player in general. So like, I'm not going to make these big swings. Um, go for it. Like I'm... I would love to have Josh Allen on my team as a Bills fan, but I'm not going to trade Josh Allen for Patrick Mahomes. Like I'm not like, right. that's just like, I, if I want to do that, I want extra picks coming back because Mahomes is clearly better than Josh Allen and he has a little more longevity. 
Um, I think, because I think Josh Allen's due for an injury probably in next year, if not the year after. So I'm not willing to make these big swings just to get the guy. But if you are this, let me get the guys I like, because that's what makes fantasy fun. You mm-hmm. can do it. Like you can get whoever you want. I haven't done an auction draft, but that's what I think I like about auction drafts is you get the guys you want no matter what. Yeah. The issue with snake drafts is you're just never going to get everyone you want. Like, But an auction, you can. I think that's why I'm, I really want to do an auction because I think it just opens yourself up like, this is my guy. I'm going to get him. And I'll, maybe I'll pay an extra $2. Like, And then yeah. that's not a huge thing. You're not in a snake draft. You have to reach a round or two ahead of them. I find myself in snake drafts going, man, in the you know fifth round, there's five guys I like. There's just no way I'm going to get them all. So I have to kind of pick and choose. Yeah. Um, same thing with rookie drafts. Like, There's a ton of rookies I like this year. And I was like, I'm just not getting them all. So right. I have to pick and choose which ones I want and which, you know, how it breaks down. So, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a learning process. I'm still learning. Like I want, like you were saying, like you can sell it, you know, and get, you know, whatever. And I won, but then the last two or three years, it's been, been like bottom. And now I'm just like, you know, rebuilding and doing all that and grabbing all the picks I can get for the guys that I had. And it, it's, it's fun because I'm like, okay, next year I know that at least they'll be in a better position. So it's always fun. Yeah. That, that's what's fun about it is you can, if you really just want to be, Hey, I'm going to go for it now. There's consequences to that, right? Right. If you trade all your future picks, you have nothing for the future. So the guy last year who made 40 trades has no, had no picks this year, has no picks next year. And he's like, I need to get a better quarterback. Cause he has Deshaun Watson. I'm like, you've got <sighs> nothing to trade. Like he wanted yeah. to get Sam Howell or Jordan love. And I'm like, you have nothing of value for me. You have no draft picks. Your players don't matter to me. I'm looking at next year. You have nothing to offer me. So he's living with those consequences. Yeah. And that's how it has to be. But I like that because it does give you those consequences and you, however you play, there's definitely the opposite side of that. So if you're a win now guy, see what happens in two years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I find myself try, looking at people's rosters and going, you don't have any draft picks and you need a quarterback. And I have these quarterbacks, but I don't want to trade with you because I don't you don't have, have any draft picks. You don't have yeah. anything for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay, so I am rebuilding, but it's kind of hard when, <laughs> when you get always, a situation like this. I think what happens is you get a, if you get two or three teams that are rebuilding in a dynasty league, yep. there's just not enough draft picks to nope. go around. And then you go, and we all have them. Yeah. I have all like, <laughs> I'm like in my, in the QB list league, me and another guy have like all the draft picks for the next, like next year. It's mm-hmm. like, there's just no other draft picks to go around. Like I could trade a, a wide receiver, but who wants them? Like who's giving me something right. for them? No one has any draft picks. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So putting out content is, I mean, it's something that I never thought that I would do. And then it kind of just the opportunity came and I was like, sure, you know, why not? Why not? So what was your journey at, into getting into putting out fantasy football content? So I, I will say I've always wrote stuff like I wrote sto- short stories, poems, obviously essays in, in school, in college. Um, I would say probably 10 years ago, a buddy of mine reached out and said, hey, I'm, I'm working with these guys. They got this little website where we can write like fun sports articles. I'm like, oh, he's like, would you want to do it? I'm like, sure. And he knew I'd love to talk and I love to argue and I love to kind of <laughs> prove a point. So it was just, it was called Bleeping Idiots. It was this really fun site where we could just do whatever we wanted to. So like the Olympics were happening. I could write a cool like Olympic story or, you know, rate the best, you know, Olympic sports. You know, these are, this is my list of the top 15 winter Olympic sports. I did one on like masks because I think who was on the, on the Giants came up with like a new mask. It was like, oh, the most fearsome mask or the scariest mask in all sports history, you know, hockey mask and football mask. And so it's like, there's fun stuff like that. I did it for a while and was like, you know, just writing for fun. And I really got to the point where I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And that site like kind of folded. And I didn't do anything for a while. Um, so just kind of fell into that. And then I was on a site called pollsports.com run by John Castillo. Um, and they, it's a site where it's still up and you can just, you post your polls of like, who wins this trade? Who's better to start this week? Whatever your trade is. And so I was on there, you know, answering questions and you can comment on people. So I think this, and just like Twitter polls. Um, and I saw he had a little blog and I clicked on, there was like one thing. So I, we had talked a couple of times. I said, Hey, if I write something, can I put it on your blog? He's like, yeah, sure. I'd love that. And I was like, awesome. Thanks. So I ended up writing two pieces, which I I'm dreading to ever go back and read. Cause I'm sure they're probably horrible. Um, put them out there. He was happy, gracious enough to put them out there. You know, great guy, great site. Um, Actually, Poll Sports was the started out front yard fantasies poll perception. That's where they end up getting their polls from to start out. 
Um, and he actually introduced me to the front yard fantasy guys way back when, and I didn't make the connection until probably last year. And then a buddy of mine, Rich Holman was writing for, so QB list is, uh, what the website I work for. One of them, he writes for pitcher list, which is their baseball side, which is way bigger than the football side. And so he was writing for both and he said, Hey, this is some stuff, right? So he said to me, he said, Hey, I'm, I'm not going to write for the football side QB list. He said, but they're looking for writers. I think you'd be great for it. Would you want to do it? I said, yeah. He goes, cool. I'm going to give you Eric, who's the editor in chief at the time. He's like, I'll give you his email. Reach out to him. So I reach out to him. I said, yeah, put together a writing sample. So I said, to him, he goes, yeah, you're like, Rich says you're good. I'm, I'll get you on board. And so got on board. And I was like, what do I write? He's like, whatever you want. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So I was like, right at the start of the season. So I did obviously sleepers and bust. Um, they've got a great team over there. They got really great graphics, which I think is awesome for our cover, you know, our featured graphics for the articles. Um, and then it was like, Hey, you're on the sit start team. So I do sit starts every week. So now I'm the sit start manager. Okay. Um, and it's intense process because we cover every game and every player. So I just did one today. It was, I did bills chief. So I have to go, you know, you're going to start Josh Allen. Here's why. And he's a QB one or a QB two or a sit based on a point range. So I say Josh Allen's a QB one means he's going to score over 20 points based on our you know PPR scoring. Right. And I go through running backs, wide receivers for both those teams in the matchup. And so I just been doing that for three years. And then I was like, Hey, I really want to do this dynasty article. And they were like, yeah, go ahead and do it. I was like, cool. It's going to be a monthly article. And now that's been going for three years. Um, and they kind of just let me do whatever I want. And then that kind of just spun up this whole big career of me now doing content left and right. So it's been yeah. kind of a crazy journey. Yeah. You, you write for a lot of places and put out content for a lot of places and, where all can people find your work? So I write, it starts for QB lists. That comes out every Thursday. Plus I do my dynasty future report for them. Uh, I do some stuff for dynasty nerds whenever they kind of need an article. So they'll be like, Hey, anybody want to do X? And I'm like, sure. First person to jump on grabs it. So dynasty nerds been great. I did a Joe Burrow piece when he got injured. Um, and then everything else is pretty much at dynasty pros. So I'm the content director at DynastyProsFootball.com. Uh, Bob Miller's the owner. He brought me on in January to kind of help run the site. So I do a lot more behind the scenes stuff, which I really enjoy. I really enjoy kind of setting that content calendar and hiring new writers and giving writers feedback. So like at lunch today, I was looking over a guy's article and just going, hey, this this is a long sentence or this doesn't make sense. Or maybe you should reword it this way or add this, delete this, um, that kind of stuff. And then, I, you know, if I want to put out content, I do it over there. So I do a uh, kind of a series called Argue With Myself, where I basically lay out both sides of an argument. So I did one on Trevor Lawrence probably a month ago. And it was like, is he good or is he not good? And kind of go back and forth with myself in this, like, I want it to format it eventually to look like a text conversation. It's just that we don't have that functionality yet. But it's basically, you know, the optimistic me and the pessimistic me um, kind of having a back and forth. And then so I do those periodically on different players that I just have this internal debate on, like, are they good or are they bad? Like, and I just don't know. Of course, I put it out there and everybody's like, ah, Trevor Lawrence is, is great. And then two weeks later, it was like, ah, Trevor Lawrence stinks. And now it's back to Trevor Lawrence is amazing. I'm like, OK, it goes. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's just Dynasty Pros is great because I get that. I get to run a website, help it grow, which I really love. But it does allow me the freedom to kind of do what I want. So it was like literally the day before Halloween. I was like, oh, I want to do an article on the scariest, you know, Dynasty prospects in terms mm -hmm. of like, are they good? Or are they bad? And then I was like, well, I should do 13 of them because it's, you know, Halloween. And I should like make each one kind of sound like a like a different monster or a nightmare, like and kind of themed it. And like literally put it together in a day, made a graphic, slapped it up there, like edited it, slapped it up there. It's been great. Um, so that's, those are the best places. Obviously the best place to find me is just on Twitter. Cause that's where everything goes. Like anything I do runs through my Twitter. It's just the easiest place I'm trying to branch out to like Facebook and Instagram and threads and blue sky and mm -hmm. every other social media there is, but it's just hard to do them all. So I just try to stick to Twitter for the most part. Yeah. I have all my parking spaces. I'm like good in all the little places, but I only am active on Twitter. It's just so hard to do, <laughs> you know, there's, there's apps that'll let you like post one thing to everything, yeah. but it's just, you know, you got Twitter, you got threads, you got Instagram, you got TikTok, you've got blue sky, you've got the fantasy football advice network. Like there's just so much of it. Like, let me just stick to Twitter and just do that. Like there's Reddit. And I just can't, I can't stand Reddit. It's just such, so trolly. They will read your stuff and they'll give you honest feedback, but <laughs> how they'll honest just, they'll just troll you for no reason. It's like, okay, cool. Um, so like Coop, Andrew Cooper is really great at Reddit and he loves it, but I'm like, I just can't do it. Coop. He's like, I know. And he's like, it's tough. And I was like, yeah, it's just not, mm. not for me. Yeah. So. I don't, I hear mixed things. I don't know. I'm not over there. But I mean, I have to be on there. We post our sit starts on there every Thursday. Yeah, yeah. So I have to be on there for like half an hour, 40 minutes just answering questions, but it's just, because it's anonymous. So people can feel like they yeah. can say whatever they want. It's like, uh, not for me. 
I like going over there though when I need like reassurance that my stupid thought is correct. <laughs> like, you know, just to make sure that, you know, and, and people will be agreeing with me, even though I, it's one of those questions where you're like, you know, like, should I eat this expired, whatever? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's great for that stuff. I use all the time for Excel help. Like I can't figure out this formula to do this. And they're like, Oh, do this, this. I'm like, Oh, thank you. Like, <laughs> I had a work project where I had to calculate age, but the, the way the system does the date of birth was different. Like not, it's not day, month, year. It was like year, day, month or something wonky. And I was like, I just can't find the formula. He's like, I'll oh, do this. And it was like this big complex formula. And I was like, thank you so much. Cause I yeah, would have right. never figured that out. So <laughs> yeah. it is a great resource. That kind of stuff, the internet. <laughs> but yeah, I can't, I can't be like a active member on there because it's just too trolly. Yeah. People will say that about Twitter too, but I'm like, yeah, will. but I can, I curate my stuff so nice. Yeah, I can block people on Twitter. It's harder to block them on Reddit. Uh, Well, okay, so podcasting is, I mean, you're on all kinds of podcasts. You're jumping on with everybody. And, you know, that's an awesome thing because it really gets those miles under your your tires and kind of get your, you know, get some wear on that, you know, get some wear on that tread and kind of get yourself situated. And you don't have your own podcast. So going on other people's podcast you were saying is a lot easier because you know, if you want to wait and but what made you decide that you wanted to go on podcast and go that route and not have your own podcast right now so part of it was so i'm trying to make, turn this into a full-time job right like that's my goal and i realized like hey you have to be able to do podcasts to get a job because you can't just get a job as a writer those are even a smaller pool of yeah, opportunities <laughs> Right. So it's like, hey, I want to develop the skill and get those hours and get those reps in. But I don't want to have the stress of like, oh, I need it. Like if I'm going to do something, I want to do it 100 percent. So I'm not going to be like, hey, right. let me do a podcast and put it out once every blue moon. Right. I really want to make sure like I'm consistent with it. Right. Part of my work that I do is with front office pros. I'm the growth and planning strategist. And that's part of the thing is like whatever we do, we have to be consistent. If we're going to do a Thursday show, we have to do it every Thursday. And if we can't commit to that, let's not even start it. Right. Um, so it was really like, let me just get on there. Plus I love, I'm an extrovert. I love people. <laughs> right. So being able to like, <laughs> okay. even though it's virtual, like being able to talk to people and talk football is like, so energizing for me. Like, let me get on there and talk to people and, and chop it up and argue and banter and be witty and whatever it is. So I just love that and just finding podcasts that are different. So I know you just did Jack's Lunacy, the Joker podcast. Mm-hmm. I did. I did that like literally, I was supposed to do the same day as you. We ended up postponing mine to the next day. So I think ours are coming out back to back in a couple weeks. Um, so it was like just fun stuff like that. I ended up doing that. And he was like, hey, would you want to come on for Thanksgiving? And I was like, well, thanks. He was like, you want to come on next Thursday? And I was like, next Thursday is Thanksgiving. He's like, oh, I'm Canadian. I didn't realize. Like I ended up doing it's like a two hour podcast we did on Tuesday before Thanksgiving. We covered every matchup, just had a great time just building those connections and just kind of having fun with people and getting to know them as people. That's what I love about your podcast is I get to know people as not, not football people just as people. I love that about yeah. yours and Kevin's podcast where I can get to know them as people. I love the front yard fantasy guys because I've been able to build a relationship with them where I know them as people. I know Joey Wright as a person, the best time I had at the expo was literally a 10 minute conversation. Me and Joey Wright walked back from the bar to the hotel. And it was just the two of us just walking back at night, just talking about life, not talking football, just talking about like, hey, where things are going, you know, what's going on in our lives, because we're both 40, we're married, we have kids, we're kind of making trying to make this a full time job. And it was just like, you know, talking to him and listening to him talk about where he's at and where he thinks they're going, him asking me questions. And Joey's the nicest guy in the world, right? Like, he's just so nice and caring and uh, like really cares about people. It was just that was the best time I had. I was like, and then I got done. I was like, man, I wish I had more of that. So I'm gonna be real strategic next year like make sure i plan more of those like kind of intimate moments um but it just that's what i love i love just talking to people as people uh the guys are front office pro joe and steve again i just saw their podcast and was like hey i really like your guys's podcast would you do you, if you ever want a guest let me have on they're like we've never had a guest but if you want to come on sure and that was a year ago and now they're like two of my best friends i literally talk to them i talk to steve probably every day if not every other day like a text them all the time. We talk about, we were just on the phone about survivor because we're in a survivor pool together. Um, you know, we, we room together at the expo. They're like just two of my, they're two friends now. Like they're not colleagues or just like friends outside of football. If we never did football ever again, we'd still be friends. And that's just what I love about this community is just, that's what I love about podcasts is I can meet people and have that intimate relationship of just like, we're friends. Like I can meet people and like, we're friends now outside of us being content creators. Yeah. Yeah. And like, with the expo, I guess we're going to go into that because it is very important. I like 
talk about it all the time on here and people are probably like, why are you like, are you sponsored by that? <laughs> no, it's, no, just, so it's good. just such a good place. And for people who are just getting started in the industry or want to meet more people in the industry or people that just want to get, I've seen people, people. If you love fantasy football, yeah. go to the expo. Like there's no, you yeah. don't have to be a content creator. You don't exactly. have to want to be a content. Like mm -hmm. you'll get to meet all the people that you've listened to on the radio. You'll get to meet people that you didn't even know existed. And you'll just, You'll spend a weekend having fun and talking very little football, but come away going, man, I know more about football. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And the amount of people that you end up meeting and people that you didn't even know existed. And it's just, and meeting people from the internet, you know, people that you've never seen in real yep. life, only talk to over the internet. So what is that experience like, especially because you're so outgoing, a lot of people are kind of like, you know, they're a little shy when it comes to meeting new people, but how was meeting all these new people? Yeah, I'll say most of our industry is introverted on some level. <laughs> I'm one of the few like extreme extroverts. Um, so part of it is I knew all these people from doing like 80 podcasts before the expo. <laughs> um, and so it's funny. I actually drove out with Jake Trowbridge and Dustin Luntz from the Drinking and Fantasy Football podcast. They live in town here in Madison. But literally, I was going to drive out by myself. And I was like, but then my dad and my stepmom were actually coming into town. They were actually going to be in Cleveland. So I was like, hey, if you if I can get a ride out, can you guys just pick me up Sunday? And they're like, yeah, I was like, okay. So I just literally messaged Jake and was like, hey, are you guys driving? He's like, yeah, I was like, do you guys have room? He's like, sure. And so I did the podcast once before. We we live in the town. They live 10 minutes away from me. I'd never actually met them in person. Yeah. So literally the first time I'm meeting is like four in the morning. I'm meeting at them at their house to leave to go to the expo. <laughs> and we had an absolute blast Yeah. on the car ride there. We talked movies and sports and music, and we just had a great time. So going to the expo is great because it's like, I know I need to meet all these people like Ronnie Evans had called me and we're like, Hey, we definitely get to meet up and meet in person. I'm meeting him at the bar. And then you know, meeting Coop who was showed up and we didn't know he was going to show up meeting people like Britt Flynn, who I, you know, I'm in her chats on her shows and I've known her and right. And then meeting other people that I just know first time I met Joe and Steve, like they show up and I meet them in person. You know, it's just one of the things I'd met a few people beforehand. I'd met Luke Sawhook, um, Steve Bradshaw, Dave Hyman, the dynasty dork. I met them at the combine. I met a couple other people at the, at the draft. So I knew a couple people here and there, but I felt like I knew people from the podcast. So just was like, I have no problem going up and saying hi to people. I have no problem walking up and be like, Hey, how's it going? I'm Dustin. Nice to meet you. Oh yeah, I know you. And I had, but I had people coming up to me and go, Hey Dustin. And I go, I don't know who you are. And they're like, I'm so-and-so. It's like, Oh yeah. I yeah. Your picture on Twitter is a banana. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, it was just great. And then you could just talk to people as much or as little as you wanted to, which was great. Um, it was just cool. And I went to the Scott Fishbowl live draft in Chicago. So I met a couple people there, which I loved. And I wasn't even drafting. I just went to hang out. Uh, thanks to Hoove, who was like really encouraging me to go. Hoove and Wendy earlier were like, hey, you should definitely come. I'm like, okay, I'll see if I can go. And I went. It was great. <laughs> and Hoove's been great. Like, Hoove's now one of my good friends. Like, Hoove, <laughs> Hoove messaged me on a Wednesday and said, hey, are you going to the game on Thursday? And I was like, uh, Packard was like, no. He's like, do you want to? And I was like, sure. And he's like, well, I got an extra ticket. You want to go with me? sure and i met him once before i met him at the at the scott fishbowl live draft and met him at the expo and we hung up like talked a little bit i had a blast with who just yeah. it's a two and a half hour drive up to green bay we stayed for half the game two and a half hour drive back just had a blast and it was just cool just to talk to who i think he adjusted your podcast at the time so he was like yeah i'm coming up with case uh, casey's coming out soon i was like oh i can't wait that's gonna be great and he's just cool i could text who yeah. anytime i want now like it's just that kind of stuff and it's funny we're at the game and i post like i'm going to the game with who and Pierre Wilson was like, hey, I'm going to be at the game. Me and my wife drove up. She's a linesman. So we met Pierre there. And it was just like Super people cool. you wouldn't normally think you would like meet. You just also have these connections through through this fantasy football community. So the expo is great for that because you just meet people. We went to the bar. There's that board game bar. Went and played board games yeah, with Joey it. and Simon and Tim Wright. Like we just had fun there. Obviously, you go to the bar and there's just a bazillion people hanging out. But you can just walk them and be like, hey, how's it going? I need to meet you and talk to them. And <laughs> there's no... One of the things I can't stand is elitism, gatekeeping, big timing people. And that is very minimal in our industry compared to other things. I used to play D&D &D and go to D&D &D conventions and gatekeeping and that kind of stuff is super rampant where it's like, oh, there's going to be this elite party. That's the gold platinum imagine it's invite only and all the big wigs are in there at the expo. It's 
everyone. It's Matt Harmon's just walking around. Scott Fish is walking around. They're not in some like elite, you know, they're not in some private venue or having some elite party. Or they're not being ushered to this thing. They're just there hanging out just like everyone else. And I love that because you can just walk up to Scott Fish and be like, hey, Scott, he's like, oh, hey, Dustin, what's up? I'm like, you know my name? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, cool. And we talk for five minutes. He's like, all right, cool. I'll see you later. It is overwhelming your first time, even for an extrovert, because you're just like, I have to meet all these people. Yeah. So you spend all this time meeting people and you go, I wish I would have spent more time talking to people. So yeah. anybody that's going for your first time, I will say that, like, reach out to people and set up lunches and dinners with people and just go, hey, can we grab breakfast on Saturday morning at eight o'clock? I'll buy you breakfast and me, you and maybe someone else. So if there's, you know, a podcast, you like, go, hey, can I, can I get you breakfast? Can we go to breakfast this day and just see if they're available for that kind of like one on one smaller group settings? Because. When you're at the bar and there's 50 people, it's loud. It's hard to really kind of connect with people on a, on a level. So that's my advice for anybody going the first time. But if you're a content creator or you're just a fantasy football fan, the Fantasy Football Expo, it's August in Canton, Ohio. It's just, it's it's a must go to event, I think. Yeah, I do too. And I've been three years and every year gets better. And every year you meet more people. And yeah, you never meet, you never get to talk to as many people as you'd no. like. And you only get to talk to people for, like you said, for a short amount. I always feel rude bouncing to the next person, but I'm sure everybody gets it. It's... Everybody gets it. And that's something. <laughs> like, I, I wanted to sit down and talk to Hutchinson Brown and his dad. And I was like, I really like Hutch. I did his podcast. I really liked his dad. So I was like, hey, I want to talk. And someone's like, hey, Dustin, can you be my beer bong partner? And I'm like, sure. Like, okay. And he's like, well, we're playing right now. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that. Like, you guys <laughs> and I just never got back to talk to them. But I was like, man, I, I wanted to sit down and talk because they were sitting down. I was like, it's just, you just get pulled left and right, which is part of the fun. I totally can't imagine being an, an introvert going to that and just being like, yay. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> if you're, if you're an introvert and you go find me, find Joey, right? Find these people who are just experts and we'll, we'll gladly connect you guys. I think that's one thing I really like about Joey is he's willing to connect people as much as he can. Ronnie yeah. M is the same way. Like I'll make sure I connect you with whoever, like, there's plenty of people. If you just go to a bar and walk in and be like, hi, I'm so-and-so. No one's going to be like, who are you? They're going to be like, hey, come on and drink with us. Hey. Have fun. It's it's just so open that I think is it's something different about our industry compared to any other industry I've seen or convention I've been to. Yeah, it, it is. It's completely different than I thought it would be. And it's like yeah. the exact same that I'd be like, I knew everybody would be cool. I yeah. just didn't know like. Am I going to be? The you just don't know around. how cool they're going to be, right? And, <laughs> right. And you, like, you don't know if cool, they're really going to be genuinely cool? cool or they're going to be fake cool. And they're actually generally cool. Like, they're just fun. But you do have to realize, like, people are getting pulled left and right. Yeah. But it's just, it, there's such there's so many opportunities to interact with people, right? Sign up for everything. Sign up for the Cornhole Tournament. Sign up for Draft Night Out. Sign up for Flag Football. Like, find a way to meet. Like, I end up playing Cornhole with some random guy, but end up, like be next to Alex Caruso for a game. And it was just fun talking to Alex and he's a cool yeah. dude. It was just never thought I'd get to talk to Alex Caruso that much, but just playing cornhole, we got to talk. Right. So it's just one of those fun things where you just get to meet people. Um, so yeah, go to that. Just the more you can interact. If there's just ever a Scott fishbowl live draft near you go to it. Even if you're not drafting, just go and hang out and meet people. That's I did that for Chicago and it was a ton of fun. With <laughs> that is, it, it is fun. I went, I had the Dallas live. Yeah, like, you did Dallas, a, right? Yeah. And it's, it was a blast. It was a blast. And I talked to those people that are in there and we're supposed to be meeting up and do all that stuff. I mean, I don't know schedules and how far away some people drove, but it's nice to just have that chat. We still talk in the chat and everything. When you were playing cornhole and you had, <laughs> was Alex Caruso like towering over you or I don't know your height. And I'm six foot. So no, okay. most people didn't tower over me. <laughs> I will say I was, I was, underwhelmed how tall scott fish was because everybody says scott fish is massive he's like six two <laughs> <laughs> i was expecting scott You're to be like <laughs> six five six six now i'm six foot so i've always said that like six three six foot to six three all look the same once you yeah. get past six three okay. you look very much taller um <laughs> yeah alex was about you know maybe he's probably like six two he's not overly i don't think he was overly tall so i just it, feel it's, so it's short there Cause all you guys, I'm like, hi guys. I'm looking There's, I mean, <laughs> it's just funny. Cause you don't know, like, right on podcast, you just see from like yeah. the chest you up, have you have no, no clue how tall people were. Julia Papleworth. Yeah. Super nice. I had no clue. She was that short. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Oh, you're wow. the It's so cute. But she's super nice. It's like, okay. <laughs> you're so cute. <laughs> she's like, you're just, Oh, you're like, and uh, Julia, I love you. You're great. But like, she's, she's short. I don't know how tall she is, but I mean, I guess six foot she's short, but like, you just don't know how tall people are. I didn't know how tall yeah. JL, 
was from Front Yard Fantasy, but he's a tall dude. You just don't know because you don't see anybody. Yeah, it's from so weird to see people's like legs. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, that's how you dress. <laughs> yeah, it's very much different. But nice it's fun. socks it's with just, sandals, bro. <laughs> it's very much what I. It's the same experience I had coming out of COVID, where everyone wore a mask in COVID, so you had no clue what they actually looked like. Yeah, and also it's like no mask. You're like, oh, that's what you actually look like. Now right. it's like, oh, that's what the rest of your body looks like. That's what you have legs. Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay, so back to the live draft, because live drafts are so much fun. We yeah. were talking before the show about the live drafts that I have in my background. <laughs> There's no video, that, so you just imagine, right? Right, right. Okay, so anyway, but yeah, live drafts are so much fun. So tell me a little bit more about the experience that you had with that Scott Fishbowl draft, not even drafting, just being there. So Hoove was like, hey, you should come to Scott Fishbowl Live in Chicago. And it's like a two-hour drive. And then Wendy Earl was like, yeah, you should totally come. I'm like, all right. I was like, let me ask the wife. And we were supposed to do something and we ended up canceling. So I was like, I want to drive down. She's like, go for it. And so I drove down and I got there. I'm a chronically an early person. It's just part of my personality. Like if you're late, if you're not, if you're on time, you're late. So I'm always like five, 10 minutes early, especially when I'm driving. Cause I want to leave time just in case of traffic. So I got there early. So I walked in and Steven Johnson was running it. And he was like, and I was like, Hey, I'm here. I'm not drafting. What do you need? Right. Like I'm here. I want to help out. So he's like, hey, can you hang these posters? And he was like, hey, can you just handle the sticker sale for the raffle tickets? But you couldn't sell you because know, you can't sell raffle tickets to yeah. selling the stickers and you got free raffle tickets. And it was like, hey, we need these people got tickets, you know, ahead of time and just meeting people. So then I was like, you know, the draft's going on. Let me get up off my table, go walk over, talk to people. You know, John McGlynn was there who I've known, who kind of works with us a little bit over at Dynasty Pros. So I talked to him a few times. Uh, JT was there who works with us Dynasty Pros. Nick Script was there who was just the nicest dude. If if you're listening to this and you don't follow Nick Script, you need to follow Nick Script. And also Nick Script is the biggest cheerleader you will ever have. I'll tell you, he motivated me more at Scott Fishbowl Draft than anybody else has ever motivated me before just by saying something nice. Um, but I went to him. Sean Floss was there, just kind of met people and just kind of walked around and said, hey, uh, went over, talked to Wendy early, and she was talking to Jim Coventry and Andy Barons. End up talking to Jim Coventry. for. He was like, I was getting ready to leave, and he was like, hey, let's talk for 10 minutes. I was like, okay, I'll sit down and talk to you. Of course, you're Jim Coventry. And he was like, <laughs> he's like, do I follow you on Twitter? I was like, I don't know. I was like, I know I follow you because you're Jim Coventry. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and just built that relationship with Jim. And now I've been on Jim's show and we've, you know, we talk all the time. You know, I can you know, shoot him a text or whatever. It was just a fun experience. I almost preferred it not drafting because I didn't have to pay attention. I could bounce around and just yeah. see people and, yeah. and talk to him. Hey, how's your draft going? How's how's life? How's, you know, how we how, how, got a burger? How, how is that? How's your food? It was just cool just talking to people and not having to worry about like who's been picked and who I need to pick. And it was just... It was just so much fun just to be there. And I would totally do it again. We're trying to get one in Madison, Wisconsin this year. We'll see. But I, I would just, if there's ever a live draft close enough, I think I'm just going to go yeah. just because they're so much fun. So much fun. And you're right about the whole being able to talk to people because I was the one, one of the people or one of the people that was in charge of the whole thing. And like, I'm trying to make sure everybody's in the right spot and everybody's here and the, trying to make the announcements over a microphone that's not working and then yeah, i'm also it's... trying to draft and my team was just like all washington wide receivers i'm like <laughs> what's going on it's, there's definitely i think that's something that has to happen like if you run the draft you shouldn't draft there because you just yep. need to be able to be yep. free but i think just having a two or three people that show up that help out that can do stuff that aren't drafting and just enjoy yep. the experience of it is worth it obviously what fantasy cares does is a massive undertaking right and they bring in they bring so much joy to the world like it's it's definitely a highly worthy cause but just being there to help out yeah. like steven didn't know i was showing up it was like hey i'm here what do you need he's like uh can you hang these posters up he's like we'll do one here one here i was like okay i got it what else do you need he's like oh. i was like i'll do this this and this like just pitching in where i could and that's part of my personality is like i'm whatever you need like use me like i'm here um but just being available and then right once the draft started it was like cool now what I do? i'm i'm like slow drafting on my computer and i'm talking to my table and walk you know i'm like i'm gonna get up go to the cell that we had like two little rooms i went to the other room talked to those people but it was just nice to be able to to float and yeah. just kind of interact with people as i wanted to and you know if i talked to someone for 10 minutes i talked to someone if i talked to them for two it was you know oh hey i gotta go pick okay cool i'll catch you later that was the best part about it just interacting with people and and right making those connections beyond twitter beyond fantasy football and just talking about life and how their week's going is so important and i think that's such an that's something that's lost on twitter is just going hey how's life <laughs> <laughs> how how are you doing like how's how's your day going how's your week how's work how's your nine to five doing we don't do that enough yeah we don't you know we do it when people say oh i got a new job or it's my birthday or my you know we do that stuff but not going hey 
um, you know, someone post, hey, my dad died. We go, oh, I'm so sorry. But do we ever follow back up with them two weeks later? Like, hey, how are you doing with that? Right. Like, how how are you doing now? Um, hey, I know you got a new job two weeks ago. How's that going? How's how's a new job going? We we almost dehumanize people on Twitter because it's just that interaction and that's it. It's just a one off interaction. There's no continued lead for friendship. And I'm not saying you have to do it with everyone because I think you do have to be selective of who you invest your time and energy into because there's certain people on Twitter. I'm like, I don't care to ever invest my time and energy into you because <laughs> you're not my person and you're just not the kind of person I want to have in my life. But there's definitely people where I'm like, hey, I definitely need to check in on you. Hey, you had a baby three weeks ago or six months ago. How is it How is it being a first time dad or mom? Like, what's that like? Oh, hey, you got a new pet. How's that going? Are they peeing everywhere? Oh, let me, you know, <laughs> hey, here's what worked for me. And just following up those kind of conversations. You have someone on your podcast or I'm on someone's podcast, reaching back out a couple weeks later and go, hey, I really enjoyed having your pod, you know, podcast. Um, I'll give a shout out to Toronto Dave. Do you know Toronto Dave? Yeah. Definitely. That's my Super homie. great guy. He posted, or actually, yeah, he's going to be on here sometime. He posted something like six, eight months ago about like, you know, how I'm struggling with, you know, gratitude or whatever. And I commented in jail comments. So he kind of put us in like a little separate chat group. And we've been kind of messaging back and forth. And, you know, met him at the expo. Again, super big introvert. Right. So he's like, hey. And I was like, oh, Toronto Dave. He's yeah. like, oh. and I'm like, And so I was on Sirius XM on Monday last week. I was super excited about it because right? it's Sirius XM. I'm on with with Bob Harris, super excited for it, you know, kind of put on Twitter. This is where it went beyond just an interaction. Dave took a screenshot of me on his serious XM display. You know, Dustin Lucky Dynasty Bros sent that to me. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. That's really cool. I've shown that thing to probably seven or eight people. <laughs> Never thought I needed that, but having that was like, oh, cool. So I just reached out to Dave and said, man, I really appreciate that because I've used, I've shown this to people. Like I can tell yeah. people I'm on serious XM, but showing them, I wouldn't be able to do that without Dave, without Dave going, man, I want to invest in our, my friendship with Dustin. Let me do something nice for him just because it's something nice. Wow. And so like that mindset is where I think we all need to get to is I want to do something nice for that person just because it's nice. I want to show that I care about them beyond what I get out of it. I want to show because I care because I care about them. So like when someone has a baby, do you reach out in six months and go, hey, how's it going? Yeah. Or, you know, a week later, like, hey, how's it been the first week or whatever that is, like going beyond that one off interaction on Twitter, I think is super huge for me because I don't think we do it enough. And th and that's why it is. Yeah, it's so cool to get to meet people from. Right. And it's yeah. hard because it is this like, I know you, but I don't know you because I know you on Twitter, but not yeah. really. But like you can get beyond Twitter, like who have reaching out and going, hey, do you want to go to a Packer game? Like, sure. Yeah, that's hope. I literally had to say to my wife, I was like, hey, can I go to a pack game? She's like, who? I was like, with who? She's like, who what? And I was like, uh, who tube? Like, I don't know who's first name. <laughs> I, literally had to get, I literally had to get in the car with him. I go, hey, who? What's your first name? He goes, oh, it's Nick. And I go, cool. So I text my wife. I was like, his name's Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I know when he came like, on, I was like, what do you do for a living? Because <laughs> me and my wife were talking. About, you know, we're well, like, my wife was like, who are you going to the game with? I'm like, who? She's like, who's who? And I was like, ah, he's a guy on Twitter who lives in, yeah. you know, lives 30 minutes away. Like, his name is just who? I don't know his name. I haven't gotten that far yet, huh? But he wants to take me to a Packers game, so I'm going. I'm going. Well, so okay. now I know his name is Nick. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what his name is. Your wife you've been bringing her up about how supportive she's been. You've also been bringing up how you want to pursue this as a full-time career in the fantasy football industry, which is super dope. And that's something that I've kind of been like, I really want to do something full-time in this space as well. What that is, I don't know, but like, it's yeah. really cool to see other people that feel that same way and to see, you know, that we're all on this journey kind of together. And th there's enough room for all of us in this space. If we, you know, we, we obviously some people, I, you know, it's a whole thing, you know, <laughs> it's right. And some people just want to do this on the side. Yeah. And that's totally fine. Some people want to do it part time where it's like they get paid, but not a ton. Like some people are fine. Just like, I'm going to do a podcast every month or whenever I'm going to write an article whenever, if that's what you want, that's fine. If you want to do it as a quasi part time where you work 20 hours, that's fine. If you want to make it a full time job, that's a worthy goal. Now it is hard. Like there's not a ton of full time jobs out there. Yeah. Um, so part of it is like, I'm a pretty strategic person. So like adding podcasts to my resume was something I was like, I need to be purposeful in that. Mm -hmm. I need to be purposeful in making connections. I need to be purposeful in getting my resume out there. So like, I've literally sent my resume to like, I think five people and was like, Hey, can you just look at my resume and tell me what needs to change or what I should add or what you might be looking for? So like Matt Deutsch with uh better sports network, like 
I just said, hey, like I met him at the expo, you know, we changed information. I said, hey, can you just look? He's like, love to. So he's like, he looked at something. He's like, why don't we set up a call? Set up a call with him. Talked about my resume. He's like, yeah, I would delete this. Uh, Will Tyge from Better Fantasy, like super cool guy. I actually talked to him today, but I was like, we met, you know, he talked to me about his app and now we just are friends. And I was like, hey, can you look for my resume? He's like, I'll do you one better. I'll look it over, but I'll introduce you to Ed Williams. And so I got to talk to Ed Williams and just talk about resume and like, what do I need to add? So like being purposeful in that, but there's jobs out there. It's just all about right being being setting yourself up the best you can to get those jobs when they when yeah. they offer it up. So whatever you want to do, if you want to just do it part time, you need to set yourself up to do it part time. You know, as a content director for Dynasty Pros, we just put out a call for like, hey, if you want to write, and people go, I'd love to write. What do I do? And I go, all right, this is who we are. This is kind of a thing. I need a writing sample. And they go, I don't know what to write. I go, okay, well here's a here's a prompt. A lot of times we get people they write the prompt and we go, cool, you wrote really well come on board and we go, Hey, we want, we kind of expecting around two articles a month. And then we get nothing from them. Like, Hey, you haven't written. They're like, yeah, I just don't know what to write. I'm like, cool. Well, then ask, like set yourself up right. for the position. If you want to do the start target, like set yourself up. So if you don't know what to write, ask, like, don't just assume something's going to happen. Like, yes, every once in a while we'll put out a call of like, Hey, who wants to do a Joe Burrow piece? Um, but whatever your goal is in, in life, whether that's in fantasy content or whatever, like you have to take steps to be strategic, to set yourself up best for those things and make your own luck on some levels, but it's not really luck. It's being strategic and going, this is the skills I need. This is the people I need to meet. This is how I prepare myself for the whatever. So I was purposeful in putting my resume out there and going, hey, how do I make it the best it could be? So when a job opening does open, I have a resume that's as best as I could be that accurately displays my skills so I can submit it like that. And so now I'm in the process of just like sending my resume to people, like what I consider the shot callers in the industry. And like, Hey, I know you're not currently hiring, but here's my resume. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you or someone you know, yeah, is ever looking for someone, I'm out there. So people know, right? And it's just that's part of it. My wife is super duper supportive. We've been married almost 12 years now. We have a 10 year old kid. Like she's super supportive of me, you know, chasing this dream. Obviously, within reasons like I can't yeah. just quit my job and do it. And like if I get a job, I need to have benefits and all that kind of stuff. I work at the University of Wisconsin, so like we have good benefits. So I can't just like give those things up and go make fifteen thousand a year. Like I need to match what i'm doing or get close to it like there's some things if i'm working from home there's some you know i can take a little bit of a pay cut i think but she's been super supportive you know i know for christmas i'm getting a bunch of podcast stuff like i think i'm getting a green screen so, um she bought me this computer that i'm on right now for my birthday i was able to buy lights she bought me the camera for for my birthday this year so it's like i'm pretty sure for christmas it's all podcast related stuff <laughs> that's like, awesome I'm getting a tripod. I know I'm getting a green screen and a tripod and there's a couple of things I put on my Amazon wish list. So she's been super great of like, if that's what you want to do and that's what makes you happy and I can balance work and life. Like she's okay with that. And she's been super great. So, you know, she's up there feeding my son and making sure his homework's done and checking his math and why I could be on here. So it's, it's super great to have someone supportive, you know, support system is huge in anything you do. If you're, you don't have support of it, your friends and family and don't have someone to rely on. It's tough. Like even when there's good things, when, you have those highs, you want to be able to share it with someone. For sure. When you have the lows, you need someone to lean on and go like, man, I thought this would do better. And it's just like, I write articles. I'm like, this should do really well. And it just, meh. And like, I thought this article would do great. Or I thought this tweet would really, you know, take off and it'd be cool information. Um, you know, Nate Pro Provlet, I can't ever say Nate's last name. He mentioned me in one of his articles last year and it was like, oh my gosh, he read, he reads my, not only does he read my stuff, but he put it in as like, this is the best five best things I've read this week. And I was like, I can't believe it. <laughs> and being I able to like them. share that with my wife is cool. Like go to my wife and say like, Hey, I got asked to be on Sirius XM. Like that's a yeah. really big deal. Like being able to share that with her and her being excited about it, even though she hates sports. Um, you know, she knows I'm excited. She's like, that's cool. I don't know what that means, but I'm happy. You're happy is super yeah. great because it just makes you having that person in your life, whether that's a significant other friend, whatever that is, is super important for everyone. What do you like to do in your free time? Like as a family, cause I know you brought up your son as well. So what all <laughs> do you guys like to do? We, we, uh, we, we're playful. Like we enjoy, like me and my son, he's, you know, boy dad. So it's like, he wants to wrestle all the time, but he's 10 where he's like too strong to wrestle with now. So it's like, <laughs> oh, you just hurt me too much. I'm 40. I can't be read up almost. I guess I'm 41 now. I can't wrestle with you all the time. Um, you know, as a family, we try to just do fun things, go out to get ice cream, you know, go, we go to Costco quite a bit. Like we just enjoy going to Costco and walking around and, you know, spending too much money at Costco because that's what you do. Because you don't need, you know, a pack of 800 batteries, but you're like, I need two batteries. So let me just buy these 800 batteries. It's cheap. Um, that kind of stuff. You know, it's Christmas time. So we, you know, decorated. We Friday and Saturday after Thanksgiving are always Christmas decorating days. So we broke out. We have two Christmas trees. So 
you know, turn on Christmas music, which I can't. The only days you're allowed to play Christmas music, in my opinion, are the days you're decorating and like literally December 22nd through the 25th. That's it. Like I don't, I'm anti Christmas the other time. So we'll put on Christmas music. We decorate it. We do stuff like that. Um, he's got a couple of friends in the streets to look them down. We got a couple of gingerbread houses they'll do this weekend and just kind of do stuff together, whether that's watching shows. We've been watching the Santa Claus on Disney Plus, the series that came out. So we've been watching those when they come out on Wednesday together as a family. Like, it's just fun stuff like that. You know, I just like having fun. We're outdoorsy people. So if we can go out, we have a German shepherd. So we might take him for a walk or go to the dog park or something like that. I can't say I can't say the W word too loud because then he gets all. Excited. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but stuff like that, like anything we can do together, that's just fun. Uh, we, we love Disney. So we go to Disney vacations. Um, we're pretty we have a rule that my wife came up with where everyone gets a 10 on vacation. So if I want to go do something and they don't, I go, this is my 10 and they have to do it. So we all get one 10. That's going to be like the 10 out of 10 on our vacation and the other people have to do it. So that's always fun because my, you know, 10 year old wants to do something goofy and my wife wants to do something, you know, not Sounds that I don't really want to do, but if she wants to do it, yeah. sure, I'll go do it to make her happy. So it's, it's fun <laughs> stuff like that. So that's, you know, really, there's not a lot. Most of my free time is hanging out with him, you know, and then it's once he goes to bed, it's content, 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 <laughs> content, content, content. Oh, you had brought up earlier about people who just don't know what to write. Like that's why they didn't do it. They didn't know where, where to start yep. or what to do. And you're really creative and have all these different ideas. How did, how do you brainstorm like what you're going to write about or does, what's the process like for you? I literally have pads everywhere in my house with notes of like article ideas. Um, I think it's just really like if you're, if you sit down to write and you're like, Ugh, don't write it. Like I did a series and I ha have more of them. So I did, um, fantasy therapy and i've done two of them and i have plans for six of them um and i went down to, literally on saturday was like oh let me write the third one and i started writing i was like i just don't feel like writing this right now so it's like let me just scrap it it's just a lot of it's the same content like there's nothing new out there like no one is going to come up with like oh my gosh this is a brand new content that no one's ever thought of like sit starts or sit starts but is there a fun way that you enjoy doing that and getting that information out there it's just coming up with something clever but even if it's just the same old same old uh so dynasty bros we do dynasty dilemmas so people are like i don't know what to write i'm like pick a player do a dynasty dilemma it's really easy give me two reasons to buy two reasons to sell and a final verdict like it's not a hard concept it's just find a player that you think is one way or the other and i and that's i like it because it forces people to kind of think of the other side right because they go oh yeah you definitely should buy anthony richardson okay cool what are two reasons to sell well there's not he's great okay well think about it like there probably is maybe it's the injury risk maybe it's you know whatever it might be there's definitely reasons to sell so it forces you to kind of think outside the box so it's really just being creative but if you're not creative i think you could just do the basics and that's okay and i don't think you have to be creative uh I like to stretch myself by listening to non-football related stuff. So there's a podcast called Colin and Samir. They interview YouTube and content creators across the space. Um, so they'll like interview Mr. Beast or they'll do, you know, big, big guys you've never heard of. Um, and they'll just talk about the, tell you to the talk about the creative process. They're like two hours long, but I love them when they come out. And one that got said this past week um, was good creative doesn't beg for your attention. And I was like, oh, that so makes sense. Like if you just do work and if it's good, people will look like don't don't. It doesn't have to be clickbaity. It doesn't have to be that. And then there's something else from a couple of weeks ago that came out that they said there's two rewards to everything. One is the reward of doing it. So like the reward for this is just meeting you and having this conversation. That's the reward. The secondary reward is what does this do for your your podcast? Right. The views, the clicks, the listens. That's the secondary reward. And, and often we focus on that secondary reward and we get frustrated and burnt out because we're worried about, oh, my article didn't get as many views or I, I didn't, you know, this video only got 100 views instead of 1,000 views and the click-through rate and all this other followers and blah, 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 blah. But just you know the reward is just doing it because you enjoy doing it. If you enjoy what you do, it doesn't matter how many views it gets. It doesn't matter how many clicks or how many followers you get out of it or how many comments. If you enjoy doing it, that's the reward in of itself that you should be focused on focused on that first reward. Don't worry about the second reward. So I literally try to stretch myself by listening to Colin and Samir and other things like that. Listen, like Ryan Trey hand talk, um, Ted talks, those sort of things just to kind of stretch my thinking on why I do what I do and how I do what I do. So is there a different way of thinking about content creation in a way of how do they do YouTube videos? Why do they do YouTube videos this way? Okay, cool. What can I take? What kind of little nugget can I take out of those things? So that's, 
it really just helps me be creative and I'm a creative person in general, but it's like, what can I do to be different? What can I do to be, you know, 1% different than everybody else? I have this analogy that football sites are all restaurants and every restaurant has to offer a burger, right? Almost if you're in a sort of restaurant, you can be two different kinds of restaurants. You can be the restaurant that has everything or you can be a very specific, like those mac and cheese restaurants that just serve mac and cheese. Problem is if you're one of those restaurants, you have to have the best mac and cheese, otherwise you fail. So if you're this general, I serve everything restaurants like an Applebee's or a Chili's, you have to serve a burger, right? You have to do sit starts. You have to do sleepers and bus because that's the general, what everyone wants. But then you can find a way of twisting that. So maybe you offer an egg on your burger, right? Maybe you offer some different topping or you offer a bison burger. And then what else can you offer outside of the, the normal staples of a restaurant? Can you offer a peanut butter and jelly which, or something like that, or a different kind of French toast or some kind of different menu item that sets you apart from every other restaurant that serves a burger and a salad and chicken fingers, right? That's the staples for every restaurant. What else can you offer on top of that? That makes you just 1% different than everyone else. And so that's what I try to do. I try to just be 1% different than what's normally out there. I'm not trying to change the wheel. Yeah. I'm make it just 1% different. <laughs> yeah. And I love as a person who consumes content i listen to all different kinds of podcasts just you know anything topics just random whatever suggested to me whatever i'm listening trying to pick up tips from people yep. podcasting too and so that's really you know it's just really cool to learn kind of what other people are doing kind of you know that'd be cool with my podcast or you know that'd be cool uh, interview podcast i love listening to interview podcasts with just anyone because i love to see how people go about the whole conversation and keeping it fresh nice <laughs> yeah you'll like columns here now they're long but they're just so they're so natural what they do it and they just they just talk but like i'll listen to that then i'll listen to like a hot ones right and then i'll listen to yeah. the fantasy footballers right so it's just these different ways of doing content in just different avenues if you look at the fantasy footballers what they did three years ago is different than what they do now you know they just have different drops they've got different segments they've got a little more right they added the deucers alley where you now see the producers instead of just hearing them right Three years ago, you didn't even know there was a producer. They maybe mentioned them every once in a while. Now they're an integral part of the show. Like they've adapted and changed the way they do their show. It's just fun. Like you look at like Dude Perfect. They used to just be trick shots. Now they do kind of different things. They do their overtime. And now they got, you know, different people kind of interplaying with them. I love watching all kinds of stuff. Like my yeah. YouTube is football, hot ones, the Sidemen, which is a UK group, Ryan Trahan, Mr. Beast, like Colin and Samir, like just all these weird and then music, right? It's just all kinds of stuff. So it's just a an eclectic mix. And I just love changing up the what I'm watching and how I'm watching and if I'm listening or if I'm actually watching. There's all those kind of fun things. I think just helps me be creative and go, oh, I never thought that maybe I could do that. Or I never thought maybe you could do it this way. Right. So like I've, and then there's a sense, another thing Colin Samir said, there's a sense of inspiration versus like stealing. So we can go, so-and-so does this. Let me just rip it off and redo it. But there's nothing where you can take that inspiration from it. So Cooter Doodle was doing her, like, this person got flossed last year, <laughs> right? Where she had that roll of flosses, like, it's 40 yards. And loved it. Thought it was really creative. And I was like, oh, that's a really cool concept. What can I do that, like, is inspired by that, but not a clip ripped off? So I was tinkering with, and I just didn't have the time to do, I wanted to do kind of like a man on the street type interview, where you walk up to someone and go, this is Kyle Pitts. He's jersey number eight. Did he have over under his jersey number in fantasy points? Like something kind of like that, like inspired by Man on the Street, yeah. inspired by Floss, and just kind of doing this like jersey number or fantasy points, right? Kind of concept, just kind of like, kind of way of digging at people who did really bad. I just didn't have the time to do it. It's not like my forte, like yeah. doing videos. But it was just like, oh, that's a cool inspiration off those things. It's like, that feels good to me that I can think of and be inspired by that, not just rip them off. I get that all the time too, where I'll come up with an idea. I just don't have time to actually. Yeah. And so I mean, sometimes yeah. I just, I, I sent that to Simon at FYF and I was like, Hey, here, this might be a great Jeopardy category. Like yeah. this might be a fun, whatever. Like I watch FYF and they do a game show. That's 59% fun. And you know, 60% fun and 30, 40%, you know, fantasy stuff. And they've got their Jeopardy and I'll send Simon and JL like Jeopardy categories. Like here's one, here's a cool puzzle. Like here's a cool movie player mashup. And he's like, Oh, that's great. And they use them all the time. So it's just like when I get inspired, it's just if I don't have time to do it, don't hoard it. Like skip to someone. Maybe yeah. someone can do it. Like I think that's totally fine too to just kind of share that out there. Because if it's good, mm -hmm. it should be out there. And it may, it, you'd, maybe you're not the one to do it. Maybe someone else can do it better. And then yeah, I've had people reach out to me that are like, hey, do you want to like get together and maybe get a group of us to like try to get this 
project off the ground and like, yeah, i just don't have time but you time know. is limited time is very limited <sighs> and i say that like i have so much to do but you know like <laughs> when work's over with i just want to come home and crash yeah. and then i have to do chores instead so you know. yeah i hear you <laughs> so you brought up survivor and i my dad would kill me if i didn't bring up survivor because it's like his all-time favorite show and uh yeah so he's telling me i watched it with him over thanksgiving like one or two episodes i watched with him and i was like wow this is really cool maybe i should start watching survivor it's so much fun have you been a survivor fan since the beginning or since the beginning i remember when it came out and it was like again it was one of the things like that came out you're like oh this is a completely different way of doing tv it's this reality tv and i was like oh that's a really cool concept and this is like the social experiment um so i've loved it there's a couple seasons i missed like in the middle there but i've watched, since watched them it's just such a fun show. Now I'm in a survivor pool where you have to like pick a survivor each week and hope they don't go home. It's a survivor survivor pool. And I being the strategist that I am, I have a spreadsheet. I track like confessional counts and I think about things as in general, I think about things from a writer's lens. So when I look survivor, I go, Oh, I think this person's going to win because of the edit they're getting and the story they're telling with this person. Not because they have idols and advantages, just because, oh, this is how they're still, because they obviously have five days worth of content. They, you know, compacted 90 minutes for an episode. So what are they, what's the story they're telling? Like, okay, this is the story they're telling to this person. Okay, this person's clearly not winning because they're not getting a story. Or this person's clearly going home next week because they finally got their moment in the sun and now they're going to be out. So I look at things through that. I look at wrestling that way. I'm a big wrestling fan. I look at wrestling through the writer's lens of how are they, I don't care what the story is. I just want to know how you tell it. I love, I don't love spoilers, but I don't hate spoilers for movies. Like I have no problem reading a spoiler. Yeah. Cause I don't care what the end result is. I care how you got from A to B. Like, how did you get there? How did you creatively get me there? And that's what I look through everything through that story lens. The same thing with content. Like I look at through the story lens of how do I lead you on this journey of, this is where I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you to think that this guy is really good. How do I narrate that story and weave it through there to get you there? So everything I look through the story. So survivor is great. I've been a fan from the beginning. <laughs> People think I should go on the show. They're like, Oh, you should submit a video. I'm like, I'm 41. I'm too old for that stuff. Now I'll just sit at home and be okay. But it's so much fun to watch and watch the way they edit things and watch the way they weave that story throughout. It's so much fun. Well, I might have to go down and catch up because there's my a lot. wife's it's, out of town. This and... <laughs> season is, is this season. I think is one of the best seasons there's yeah, been. Yeah, my the dad. A couple was episodes slow. were slow, but this season has been really good. Last season was good. I think 46, which is coming up after the Super Bowl, I think will be really good as well. They've, again, they've adapted the way they they do the show because they knew they had to adapt with the time. So they're doing right. different things. They, the way they edit certain episodes are different. They're doing a lot more flashbacks and kind of time lapse is not very linear. There's some stuff that's not linear. It's it's just a lot of fun. Again, from a writer's viewpoint, it's like, oh, it's smart the way you did that. <laughs> oh, I see how you got there. And then I listen to On Fire podcast, which is like their official after show podcast. And listening to Jeff talk about, oh, we decided to edit this show this way because of X. I'm like, oh, that's so cool that you decided this is how you wanted to play that out. So it's, just, it's a lot of fun that way. I, that's just my brain because I look through everything through that writer's lens of how did you get from A to B? I, don't, I know what A and I know what B can be, but how did you get there is what's fun. That is what's fun. And I'm the same way with spoilers. It doesn't bother me yeah, most of the time. Me. My wife will be like, how do you know all these spoilers? Why don't you, you shouldn't know this information? Blah, 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 blah. Because I'll be like, I know who, I know who dies. <laughs> or whatever. Like, a know. new Marvel comes out. I'm like, oh, cool. Like, I'll give you a couple of days. Like, ah, tell me what happens. Like, tell me the post credit scenes. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Now I want to see it and see yeah. how it sets up. And like, because you can hear about it, but seeing is the whole different thing. And like, mm -hmm. oh, so-and-so dies at the end. Cool. How did they get to that point? Yeah. Like what did what's the story weave? So when I watch shows, it's really I love binging shows because I can get that story. I I really have a tough time with this weekly. I like Survivor because it's ninety minutes, but I wish it was like all came out at one time because I can just binge it all and see that kind of that arc throughout the whole thing. But I like Survivor because I can analyze it in between in between episodes, which is fun. Yeah, interactive. It's fun. Yep. Yeah, that that yeah. I, there was a Survivor something a fantasy league a while back that somebody was like, "Do you want to join?" And I was like, "I don't watch Survivor." So. Oh yeah, Ryan does that. Yeah. Yes, he, Ryan Hallam. That's Ryan Hallam. I was in it and I lost the first. I watched like three weeks <laughs> in because my I had the last pick in the draft and it just didn't go uh, well. It didn't go well. I had crappy picks and I picked the wrong people, but mm. I I've been saying since like so this year Survivor like week four I was like oh I think these two people win I still am pretty right that they're gonna win like and i was like these people are definitely not gonna win because they're definitely not getting the edit and my buddies steve and joe were like how do you know this i'm like well part of it's just you can look at like if you think of it through that writer's lens like look at the story they're telling of these people 
Yeah. I was like, this other person didn't get a story, so they're clearly not going home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like how you pay attention to all that. That that's I, awesome. I pay attention to all of that. I'm a all very I'm very I'm not really like analytical, but I'm very much like let me notice things. I have a ton of spreadsheets for everything. I'm a spreadsheet guy. Like my fan, my dynasty leagues all have spreadsheets and every team is color coded and I move the cells of who's got who traded what players and what picks they have. I oh, wow. I track all that stuff. Are you you're only in like one league or how many leagues are you in? I am in two dynasty leagues. Two dynasty. My family keep my family league and then obviously the tournaments. Yeah. I yeah. can't do I used nice. to do like 10, 15 leagues in my office. Like it's too much. I'm like, all right, I'll do two yeah. leagues. But it's like I'll do two leagues plus the charity leagues because they don't count. But are you in Baby Bowl? No. So Baby Bowl is a league. It's a year long league. It's like twenty bucks or twenty five bucks to get in, and you can you make a lineup: quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a flex, and a tight end. But once you pick someone, you can't pick them again for the rest of the year, and it's hmm. cumulative score. So of course, I was like spreadsheet. I need 18 quarterbacks. Who are the top 18 quarterbacks? Okay, let me pair them with their wide receivers. What wide receivers can I use solo? Like, I can use Jalen Waddle on his own because I'm going to pair Tyreek and Tua. So I don't need to have Tua and and, because I can't pair those two up. So I can use him because I got to. And it's like, I have a spreadsheet and every week I track this is where I'm at. This is what place is, how many points I am behind first. And it's worked out really good. I moved up to, I think, 13th place this week. Um, I had a really good week. I was top five in scoring, but it's, I love it because it's that strategy of, who do you use when and, and how many yeah. people do you have to use and who do you have left? So I, I planned out the rest of the year and I was like, Oh, I've got enough to have an extra week of lineups of still good players left. So it's like, man, I can just play matchups and be all right. So it's just, that's, what's fun about it. And then there's a playoff edition too, which if you ever want to get, if anybody listening wants to get in the playoff edition, uh, Rob Norton puts it on or you can message me or Rob Norton, but it's a fun, you know, I think half of it goes to charity and half goes to prize payout. So I came in third last year. So we were in Disney and, I won third place and got, you know, a, hundred, a couple hundred bucks. I was like, hey, we all get to buy some hey. extra souvenirs at Disney. But Perfect. I love that strategy pace of it. It's so much fun. Oh, that does sound like a lot of fun. I love leagues that are different than your normal run of the mill. It's definitely different because people were like, first week, I'm going to use Christian McCaffrey and, and Saquon Barkley and all the top guys. And it's like, cool, now you have no one left. Yeah. And there's some guys who waited and used, you know, like I used Daryl Henderson. It was like, okay, it's the last week for Daryl Henderson. Kyron Williams has come back. Let me use him now because that saves me down the road. Yeah. So it's all those kind of pieces that kind of play into it. And obviously injuries. If you didn't use Joe Burrow, obviously you don't have many more to use. So you're like, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would that wouldn't be fun. But you know, you you I'm sure that is this. The first, I don't know anything about it. So this is very awesome that you're telling me about it's this. The sec- it's the first year I've done the full season. I was in the playoffs last year for Baby ah, Bowl. Okay. And so Baby Bowl playoffs, same thing. Like once you use them, they're done. It mm-hmm. gets a little more tricky because obviously teams get eliminated. So if right. you, let's say, use the cat, like, use Dak Prescott and they beat the Vikings and you never use Vikings, you're just eliminating yourself. So at the end, yeah. Super Bowl, some people didn't have a quarterback left because they had already used Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. So they're like, I guess ah. I'm throwing. Mariota or whoever the back was and hope they use. So like being strategic and that gets really, cause you only have four weeks of the playoffs and people are getting limited. So you're like, there was teams that got down to it who didn't have, who were starting like, you know, like the Clyde Edwards, Alaire in the Super Bowl Cause they didn't have any other running backs left. <laughs> oh man. So, the strategy. It's, the strategy is fun. I, I love it. I tweeted, I tweeted about today. I just love that strategy piece of it. I love hearing about strategies and that, 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 that's an awesome whole thing i like that league setup so yeah i'll have to definitely hit up to to hear about that playoff yeah hit up rob norton on twitter he's it's a great league it's you know obviously half it goes it's like half the charity and then there's like a weekly winner for top prize and there's like the top 10 i think get paid uh some breakdown of the money that's left pretty dope pretty dope yeah (laughs) well dustin i'm gonna go ahead and kind of wrap it up just because you know long day for all of us but also you know we've got we've gotten to know you and i'm very excited to get to see you at the expo yes and to just yeah to chat with you maybe six minutes instead of five but maybe we'll get an extra minute in there (laughs) so why don't you go ahead and just let everyone know where they can find you again and then where they can find your content as well yeah, the best place to find me is on Twitter at the D Unit 13. So T H E D U N I T 13, or just search Dustin Ludke, L U D K E. It's the best place to find me. Uh, you can find my sit start stuff at QB List every Thursday that comes out. Plus, I have a monthly article, usually end of the month. Uh, most of my other content is on DynastyProsFootball.com. 
uh, give us a like, you know, uh, YouTube over there. I don't do much of the YouTube, but we have a YouTube channel. So a like subscribe is always helpful. Um, you'll catch my content there. And then I do some stuff with dynasty nerds as well every once in a while. And then I am the growth and planning strategist for front office pros. Uh, Joe and Steve do uh, three shows a week. So Mondays is like buy now targets kind of roster construction. Uh, Wednesdays is an IDP segment. And then Thursdays, they're doing Sit Starts Live Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central or 7 p.m. Eastern time. So they do Sit Starts Live. So you can, you've got Sit Start questions. You can ask them there right before the game starts. And I'll hop on with videos with them and do some combine stuff. I went to the combine and draft in person last year. So yes. if you're, if oh you're my looking gosh. for stuff like that, <laughs> you could definitely hit me up. I'll probably be back this year doing that kind of coverage. So it's just fun to kind of, my goal is to bridge the gap between football news and fantasy football news. So right nfl released man of the year stuff so i want to make sure that gets out of my twitter so i did that this morning so that's my that's thing but twitter is the best place you'll find any of my content there plus any of the guest spots i do on podcasts gets all routed through my twitter excellent excellent please 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 go check out dustin's content and go give him a follow as well super super two thumbs up i would suggest following dustin so go do that and also make sure that you come back next week no Not next week, probably. (laughs) But come back soon for another episode of Get Real with Casey Kasem. And remember to stay red.